Howdy doodly. Uh, welcome back to another episode. It's a golden age now. So we get to pick our new uh, dedication for the Renaissance. We're going to pick Monumentality as always. Uh, we, could, we could try some other things, but I think Monumentality is the best one because, you know, the more we can do with faith, the better. Yeah, that's always good. So as you can see our empire is rather big and growing still and I'm still trying to find places to settle. Fortunately that's proving a bit of a difficulty. Because, you know, with this ability you mainly want to be purchasing settlers. So, purchasing one every now and again to get that going. And in our science and culture city of Moscow, we've got Pankala working away. Hopefully that city will become one of our main sources of, uh, what do you call it, you know, stuff like that. St. Petersburg, surprisingly enough, hasn't got its shrine, so I think we'll quickly get that in the way before we get the, uh, the wonder, the St. Peter's Baltica, because, you know, I'm saying, um, I'm, I think St. Peter's is different from Peter the Great. I, I, don't, I don't quite think it's, yeah, something tells me that isn't quite the same. Something tells me, uh, that the, the Saint Peter came before, hmm? Building a few industrial zones, not too sure why. Yeah, mostly for the great engineer points and the production boost, it's always handy. I, I, I just like building industrial zones, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm bad at preserves, because I, I, I'm not good at building those, but I can build industrial zones for days. I suppose I could try, like, a... Full loose teddy uh, playthrough where it's all about beauty and uh, peel on tiles. I gotta say though, he's quite a powerful server early on. Because <laughs> if you get the right spawn location, you can get like loads of science and culture all of a sudden for no apparent reason. No, but um, uh, Empire is proving rather productive, mostly due to that Pantheon, where we get the old um, production boost from our holy sites, and it, and it really helps, especially when you've got the uh, scripture card plugged in, which gives you 100% of the adjacency on all your holy sites, that card is just amazing, it's given us like a lot of faith, I think almost half of it probably. No, um, I think our main goal now, and especially looking up cartography, will probably be to uh, explore the world with a navy. So maybe we could find some land to settle or something. Something like that. That's our main goal from now. Gonna remove this for farms. We could always do with more farms. This, though, I'll use for a lot of milk. The island's so small it's not worth preserving the beauty in there. Just good getting some productive tiles. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the turn time is taking a wee while. Takes its uh, sweet time, I'll give it that. It's annoying. If I had like a strong PC or whatever, and not like a toaster, a portable toaster, then I could probably, it would probably go a lot faster. Maybe, maybe I should, I stop trying to go for huge games, because I like big games, because, you know, there's so many people to interact with. Speaking of interactions, the Ottomans are very friendly towards us. I don't know why, like, they're ravaging Star Cities, right? Maybe they just don't want a retaliation? The, uh, PRT, I think, I don't know how to say that. I'm trying to find it now, I don't know where I just saw that. Anyway, it's a... I like, quite like that one there, actually. It's quite unique, as in, like... One, it seems to have houses on it, but it still counts itself as a natural wonder, despite the obvious um, influences of human activity. 
and I think it can give you great merchant points and other trade route stuff. I'm not too sure. I've never quite. I've never really. I'll be honest. I get pretty nasty uh, luck when it comes to those sort of things. Anyway, I'm considering a war on these guys, but I I don't know whether it's just me, but my science race isn't catching up enough, and walls are really slow if you have the same amount of science and the same amount of progress, because you know. Their walls of cities are really strong, and you have to use your strong units to batter them down. And a bombard at this stage would be useless. But anyway, there's the Notre Dame, and a terrible flood has ravaged our lands and destro uh, destroyed our farm. So I'll need to repair them again. Probably worth cutting out a farm, destroying a farm, cutting the resource on it, and then putting a dam there so that doesn't happen again. Because I know with the climate change, it's probably going to happen a lot. Which will be annoying. Anyway, we're going around with James of St. George, building up some of the cities that uh, didn't have that stuff before. Slowly making our way through the Renaissance. I think I'm slowly catching up for, for in terms of science. In culture, in terms, I'm definitely catching up quicker. I don't know why that is. Uh, probably because of the holy sites. Not the holy sites. The, um, what do you call it? Ah, uh, yes, the theatre squares. <laughs> Got him, I think it's. England at this point has got like a really strong army. That is, that is insane. That is a pretty cool, cool crazy. Is. I think this guy likes us because we've got our amenities high or something? I don't know how that works. Oh, it's probably because of Republican legacy because for every, for every city with a district it immediately gets one housing and one uh, amenity. Which is really good. If you've got like a wide empire and need to keep them all happy. But, yeah, I can't really say the same thing about, what do you call it? Yeah. Oh, I can't say the same thing about um, all the other good wildcard policy slots. That's the thing with our government. There's so many good wildcard policy slots, you know, wildcards and stuff that give me extra great people and all that, and I just can't plug them in. You know, it's too much. And really that's why you want to, like the late late game governments, like synthetic technocracy, uh, corporate libertarianism, or digital democracy, which, well, I don't know what, it, what all of those mean, but... I know synthetic technocracy is... So a technocracy is, uh, from my... Uh, research a government that is run by the people most educated to do it so so for instance the agriculture division would be by like a highly skilled biologist person which I, th I think that's how it runs but I think hang on if I look that up Technocracy is a proposed system of government and decision makers or makers are selected on the on the bias of their expertise in the given area of responsibility, particularly in regard to scientific or technical knowledge. Yeah, so basically, if you were going to be like the Minister of Agriculture, you'd have to be like really good at biology and agriculture and all that. And a synthetic technocracy, uh, that... That is an also proposed uh, system of government where that includes non-human things and not like a pig running, running the, running the government. I mean, like a AI who has infinite knowledge and all that. They would be, they could be put in charge in a synthetic technocracy as they have, you know, the um, the will.
And now we're building the Colossus. This is not a bad one though. It's like something to do with... It doesn't often get picked up. Like, this is DD AI, and I'm damn sure they've got harbors, but none of them pick this thing up. So if your city's bored and doesn't know what to do, and, and you could use an extra trade route, this is uh, something you can do for the trade route bit of tourism. But hey, that, that's all good. Here are some, unlike some good policy cards for great engineers and all that. Unfortunately, I can't change most of them because Republican legacy is just so good. Or the White Empire. I'm mostly making these trade routes kind of for the roads <coughs> and also kind of for the yields with our own cities. And we just got the achievement for, uh, sorry, the, yeah, not the achievement, but you know what I mean. The thing for most cities, which I think we have to have three more cities than our next highest competitor, which I, I assume is good. The Ottomans only have like, well, I took two of those cities, arguably. But they've only got four cities now. That I know of. Maybe they've settled some faraway land. But, no, they've only got that to speak of for now. Serves them right for settling so close. Building a preserve in here. Fairly so I can say I built a preserve, I don't really mind. <laughs> Probably plant some trees in there when I get the, uh, uh, the civic to do so. Much is great because with such a high faith income we can just go into any city and place two districts and that's what it's going to do for the rest of the game. For instance this one, you're building a lava, no more. Well bam, you instantly got it and you're generating so much faith and then soon you're going to make it generate production as well and boom boom shakalaka, you know? So these are prime fishing locations. Well, when you do an abundant map, it tends to be the, f the case that if you know how to settle in the right spots, you're always going to get a pretty good adjacency harbour. Because the city centre provides plus two already, which is already amazing. And harbours also, adjacency can also provide production as well. With the shipyard. So, yeah. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a more gold trade focused holy site, you know, which is fine. Also, it counts as like a military building. And by that I mean like, it's on the same line with the barracks as and if you train a boat there, it gets... Uh, bonuses and all that, but unlike the barracks, instead of giving you like no adjacency or like in any bonus, it gives you just straight up production if you build any of the stuff inside, along well, with like a few other housing and stuff like that bonuses in your barracks. Uh, so that makes it not really worth it to get unless you want a higher resource stockpile, which is, I guess, is handy. But for that, you only need like one or two. But other than that, no, it's not really, not really worth. Or unless you want to uh, produce cores straight out the gate. And you know, if we want to do that, well, we're looking at the religious victory. Surprisingly, I haven't got much. Probably it's because I've only converted my cities. And no one else's. And England's winning on the old domination front. Uh, keep been getting these. That the World Congress always like pops up for emergency sessions and condemns someone for fighting the city state. I'm not sure what's going on there, but meh. We're just moving Liang around as well. I must say it's very fun not having to wait for the governors to show up and just moving them around instantly. And I think it's fair because, you know, the AI can do it too. 
if it affects both you and the AI and you know, minds. But also it's a single player game, so play how you want. You're allowed to do cheats, mods, whatever you want. I do that all the time in single player games. I don't normally play multiplayer games. Ah, uh, yeah, now I think about it, I don't normally do that. Just never repealed. Yeah. What are you gonna do? So I think I'll uh, wrap up this whole episode here. We are building the uh, St. Basil's Cathedral. And that's a very good one for Russia because obviously you'll be sitting on tundra anyway. So I'll just, I'll find a city with only tundra tiles and inland like Novo, Novos, Brisk here. And I'll, and I'll use that. There are a few missionaries. Um, in a foreign field from Macedonia over there looking to bring what looks like a, a courthouse religion over which uh, we will not have that is blasphemy sacrilege so I will not have it and we are building the terracotta army a great little one there not only for a tour a good for a tourism and a domination victory domination is a site that all your army gets promoted tourism is such that your archaeologists can go anywhere without open borders, which means that even if you've denounced someone, which you probably shouldn't do in a tourism game anyway, but and it, it'll be good for you. Anyway, we're going to do a bit of city-state fighting ourselves with Paul Brosden, because it's weak, he doesn't seem to have any army, so we'll just slowly chip away at it. Eventually. But I must say, our tech needs to advance significantly before we get any of that done. So I think I'll leave the episode off here, and see you next time.